Okay, in this video we're going to be looking at how to replicate stop motion animation in Maya. Stop motion animation was popularized in films like King Kong and the Harryhausen Sinbad films. It's created by changing the position of maquettes and filming them one frame at a time. But how do we achieve a similar effect in Maya? Okay, so here is a similar example to the one that I show at the start with this skeleton warrior walking. Um, in the example at the start, I've got him stopping and kind of standing and turning towards the camera, but essentially it's the same process. So one way that um, I've seen lots of tutorials showing how you get the stop motion effect in Maya is this, which is you go in, I'll just turn the polygons off, select all the controls of the character, um, and then just bake these out on twos, like so, I'm going to bake them out. And then you take the animation that you've got and you put it on stepped. Now what you get, I'll show you in this video, if you do this, is something that looks like this. Which, though kind of works, to me it looks like the stop motion animation that uh, you used to see in BBC or children's television programs back in the 70s and 80s like Bagpuss and the Magic Roundabout. Um, because stop motion animation done for films is done on ones, not done on twos. That's more for television broadcast. Okay, so this I think is a better way of achieving a kind of filmic stop motion effect. Um, so what I do is, I've just put this back to where it was before. So I'm gonna turn the polygons off. So just. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the frame rate. I normally um, animate on 24 or 25 frames a second. Now for this to work, it's better if it's playing at a slightly faster frame rate. So I'm going to go for 30. But what I'll do first, I'm, I'm going to animate the entire animation. Sorry, I'm not going to animate. I'm going to bake the entire animation out first. I'm just going to bake it out in one so I can show you something. So I'll bake it out in ones. Uh, to 150. Now, if I, I'll show you, so this ends at 150. If I alter the frame rate to 30 frames, you'll see that the last frame now is 188. So essentially Maya stretched my animation by one and a quarter so that it will still play at the same speed. So the skeleton, even though the frame rate's increased, isn't actually walking faster because the animation's been stretched out. Okay, so that's a positive thing. Um, so what I do is with the frame rate changed, I'm gonna select the whole animation again. And this time I'm gonna bake it out at 1.5. So I'm gonna bake it out, it's supposed to one, 1. 1.5. So it's playing at 30 frames and I'm sampling by 1.5 frames. So I'll bake it out again. And then I mustn't forget to select all of the keys and put it in stepped. Uh, when you bake out an animation, Maya will automatically, um, if you've been animating in spline, it will put it back to spline after you've baked. So you've got to put it in stepped again. And if I look at this in this example, we can see it's working a bit better, but still is probably a little bit too smooth. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is the last step of this is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna deselect the master control. I've animated this using the master control to push it forward. Um, if I'd animated it in global space, then obviously I wouldn't have to, there'd be no animation on this, it would just be on the feet and the root control. So uh, the process is, is identical. If you've animated this in global space, the only difference is you don't have to deselect or, or put any uh, deal with the master control. But seeing as I've used this, I'm going to have to deselect it. So with just 
with all the controls minus the root feet and master if you've used that at all I'm going to bake this animation out again and this time I'm going to bake it on twos so now I'm I have the feet the root and the master at being baked out at 1.5 frames every 1.5 frames everything else on twos so I'm going to select everything make sure it's in stepped and now if you look at it we can see we have a pretty good approximation of filmic stop motion and here's a rendered example of the skeleton coming in stopping and turning with the frames on these settings now the good thing about doing stop motion in this way is depending on the, the kind of effect you want whether you want old school style stop motion or perhaps something a little bit more like modern stop motion you can smooth out your animation so for example if I want my uh, stop motion animation to look less like a kind of traditional Ray Harryhausen animation I want to make it look a little bit more like something we might see in modern a modern movie like a like film you know I can do that and just by smoothing out a few of the curves now I'm very careful I, I never I don't smooth anything other than the horizontal uh, translations um, just because you know they often if the characters moving around make the character look a little bit more or less jerky I mean of course if the characters moving a lot in the up and down motion then I'd probably smooth out the Y translation but just to show you so for example if I select the master control here um, this is presently of course stepped I'm just going to put that on spline now if I play this what we see is the feet now of starting to buzz because before the feet were moving in sync with the master and now they're not so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the feet control and I'm going to put both of just the translate Z which is the forward and backwards movement of the feet I'll put this on spline I'll do this one as well so put these on spline and now if I look at character we still have that stop motion feel but the feet aren't um, buzzing around and it's just a little bit smoother and this is the final animation with the stop and the turn um, normally um, if I'm trying to imitate stop motion animation I don't use motion blur because they didn't know how to do that back in the day when they were doing it um, though when I render it out I normally render it on a separate layer and just blur it slightly so it doesn't look too crisp and here is the final animation with a little bit of Bernard Herrmann's music just to make it look like it's a real thing.